I was recently on a pen test for a client of mine and naturally they wanted us to start with a black box approach without providing us any credentials and if you've ever been on a pen test like that you know how much that sucks my approach had to change and kind of gave me an idea to make this video and talk about how you can actually abuse ci cd pipeline or continuous integration and continuous development pipelines to hack into your organization or if you're doing a bug bounty or pen test next time you can maybe use some of these techniques to hack in or maybe get some leads that could help you with your objectives so let's talk about what is ci cd and why is it being used? Well, CI CD is pretty much the continuous integration and continuous development process that a lot of DevOps team use to pretty much automate how they deploy code to their development or production sites. And before we jump into the video, I wanna make it clear that I am not a developer at all. I've never done any development or been on a DevOps team and everything that I'm gonna talk about throughout this video is just purely based on my experience, which is bug bounty programs or pen tests that I have done that has been lucky enough for me to be able to research into these matters and kind of talk about them to you guys now in this video. So with CI CD, there are a lot of different tools that you can see pop in and you can sometimes see these tools are exposed on the internet or maybe sometimes there are just behind some VPN where a company's authorized users and applications can interact with these tools. When it comes down to it though, you have a couple of options, either using something like an Azure DevOps suite, which is a suite of tools that actually allows you to either deploy code, change or test for it, but you can also go down and just use some of these different products, for example, Jenkins, Circle CI, GitHub CI, or even GitLab CI and do them on your own. But how you do it is not really important. At the end of it, if there are a couple of mistakes made, a hacker or an attacker could break into that pipeline and abuse it in order to just hack into an organization, for example. So in this case, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. The number one and most popular one out of all of them is a supply chain attack. In this scenario specifically, the attacker is actually required to go after a third party library or dependency, inject some malicious code, and wait for that code to get pulled into the pipeline and then later get executed and provide them access into the infrastructure. The second one is more on the code injection side of things. I've personally never had this happen yet. I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I've seen people talk about how you can inject malicious code within an application or there is a vulnerable code in the application that could later provide you access to the CI CD pipeline. I'm going to skip this one, but I want to talk about the third one, which is the purpose behind this video, which is the misconfiguration. A misconfiguration could happen in a number of different ways. The first one being just misconfiguring these endpoints that are supposed to be protected and not protecting them enough or leaking credentials within them where an attacker could get access to them. The second portion of the misconfiguration could come with overexposing your CI CD pipeline. Think of this example as having your own personal GitLab or GitHub repository online for your company's domain, for example, gitlab.site.com. And you're not supposed to expose this to the internet and let's say somehow you have to because of your third party contractors or developers, but something that I've seen happen sometimes is that I can actually hit an explore endpoint, for example, on GitLab, which actually gives me access to the GitLab dashboard. And just going through those projects, sometimes you can find a lot of different keys or even in the logs of them, I've seen GitLab build keys that later gave me access to the entire repository. So that's one of the ways that you can do a misconfiguration. It could be that you just don't properly gate some aspect of your tools that are using and somehow they can get access and then later leak some information. There's also a third misconfiguration that could happen and that's just simply leaving behind files that are not supposed to be left on a web server, especially with dev sites I've seen happen a lot is you just leave some of these files behind and even though it may look just innocent, a lot of times they expose too much information and in some even worse cases, you can actually find live credentials or API keys within them. So now that we understand the basics of CI CD pipeline and how can somebody hack into them, let's take a look at an example and be examples of different products and the associated files and endpoints that come with each one. For this video, I'm going to actually use HackerOne's AI that just released last week. I know that it's very much focused for their customers, but I kind of want to take advantage of it and see if as a hacker, it can give me any good data. You can use whatever one you want. You can use ChatGPT, you can do cloud. I'm just going to stick to high because I want to see if it actually has a use case for me as a hacker. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask it, hey, what are some popular tools you use in a CI CD pipeline? And can you just name 10 of those for me? And right off the bat, it's going to come back and say, that it has a few, which one of them is Git, Jenkins, Travis CI, Circle, GitLab, Azure Pipelines, which is a great place to start. We have a decent list of different tools, but now the next question is, can it provide us a list of potential files? This could be dot .files, YAML files, and just tell us which ones are associated with which product. So now we're gonna ask it that question, 
Now that we have asked that question, we can see there are a couple of files that are really, really interesting. One of them is the Jenkins file. It could be the git ignore file. We can also see that there is the GitLab CI.yaml. And then obviously Circle, if they're using Circle CI, there's a config YAML for it. Same thing with Travis. But now we kind of have an idea of the naming conventions of each files. But now I want to kind of see if I can get an extensive list. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask it to give us a list of 50 files that are not just for these tools, but just across the board for CI CD tools, even if they're not listed in this video. So what we're going to ask this time is can you give me a list of example files maybe 50 of them that are similar to jenkins files maybe we can do git ignore and we're just going to also ask it for gitlab ci.yaml and see what it gives us and there we have a list of decent files that could actually be potentially used or leaked behind the scenes when you're doing your ci cd automated and sometimes because of human errors or because you just are looking at too much automation these files could be included in a package or it could be in a project and it could leak and some of these could actually have credentials that could be leveraged to access a different part of your pipeline or just purely get access to your entire environment but now let's take a look at this pen test that i was doing and obviously i can't share the exact volume with you so i've just kind of mimicked this on my own local machine but the whole thing started with me coming across a .git file which if you're not familiar with the .git file it pretty much allows git to know what files to track when they are committing changes. And if you look at an example of a .git file, this is kind of what it looks like. And it kind of says, hey, you need to ignore files for the node module, for example. It could be a, everything that has a .log. It could be a specific extension, for example. And you can also go as far as saying, hey, ignore specific files, folders, or even configuration files. In this example, one of the things that stood out to me was just seeing the list of different files that they use. So if I'm an attacker and I want to look for .log files, I know these files probably exist. I just got to find the naming conventions for it. Or even worse, it's actually just giving me a hard-coded path to a database config file or even a Docker Compose.yaml file. So the next step here is for the easiest one, which was pretty easy in this case for this pen test, was just purely doing a Docker Compose YAML request. And it just comes back and gives you a list of the example users for in this case, it's a DB password. In my case, it was very, very similar. It actually gave me the database password. And then there was a PHP my admin somewhere hosted where I could log in. But then there's also the other aspect of looking at these .git ignore files, which is just at the bottom here, it's also telling you the folders or different applications that could be on here that they don't want to track for some awful reason or for some good reason, which you can also abuse by just going to these folders and just saying maybe just to see if this folder, for example, the test folder, it actually exists. And if it does, then you can just brute force for different files and different parameters within this. This is a very, very easy example of it. Obviously, sometimes these folders that are going to be in here for this case, for example, we have the upload and test. It could be a lot of different, more complex naming conventions that could help you get a lead into that example website. But in my case, honestly, it was super easy because it just purely gave me some of these files that were hard coded and just looking at the two files that leaked on there it just gave me access to their build and also gave me access to their database so this is just a pretty good introduction to hacking ci cd stuff i don't know this is something new that i'm trying let me know if you want me to actually maybe create some labs or find some online labs that we can solve together drop me a comment let me know do you want to see more content like this i've been genuinely enjoying hacking these kinds of products and i would love to make more content on it but that all depends on you so drop me a comment and if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.